Hi, welcome to uh, another video in the series. This one is for uh, horse owners and uh, uh, apprentice farriers as well. Uh, the aim of this video is just to talk through the main structures of uh, the horse's forelimb. Uh, just some surface anatomy really, just to point out some of the main things and where all the bones are located. So, uh, when we're talking about uh, the horse's limbs, the horse's limbs are divided into the forelimb and the hind limb or more specifically the thoracic limb is the forelimb and the pelvic limb is the hind limb. For this video we're going to concentrate on the thoracic limb. Okay so horse first, this is, uh, this is our horse, this is a horse called India. She's 16 hands, 15 year old, Belgium warm blood cross, uh, pretty calm placid horse. So, uh, so anyway into, into the anatomy. So the first bone uh, in the thoracic limb is this bone here and it's called the scapula okay and the scapula is located this sort of region here okay it's a flat bone it uh, it has a piece of cartilage on the top okay the bone itself stops around this area here and then it has a second piece of cartilage called the cartilage of the scapula or scapular cartilage which extends the bone right up to roughly the point of the wither, uh, point of the withers the point of this bone okay flat bones generally do one or two things they either serve as protection okay they are uh, quite thin uh, flat bones bones of the skull for example protect vital organs such as the brain and the ribs uh, which protect the vital organs the second function of flat bones are broad flat surfaces for the attachment of muscles and that's what this particular bone is for. There's lots of muscles up here, uh, quite high up, uh, and they all pretty much attach to the scapula. Like I say, outlining it again, the scapula is this sort of shape. It has a ridge or a spine that runs down the middle of it. You can just feel it under the skin here. And again, it's for uh, muscle uh, attachments. So uh, this is our scapula. But the bottom end of the scapula here, it articulates with or joins up with the next bone which is a bone that runs in this direction here and it is called the humerus it has a slight twist to it as it goes down okay and this is a long bone okay really heavy uh, weight bearing bone this is uh, the humerus so we have scapula and then we have humerus here in here we have the ulna which is the elbow okay the ulna runs roughly in this area here and it's made up of two bones the ulna itself and then at the top here at the point is called the olcranon uh, process okay and this is the elbow if you have a horse with capped elbow and you get a swelling in this area okay that's what it is uh, the the tricep muscle okay attaches onto the olcranon process here and at that attachment point there are two bursas there's a subtendinous bursa and a subcutaneous bursa enlargement of the subcutaneous bursa would be uh, capped elbow so we have scapula humerus and we have the ulna here then we have this long bone here okay this long bone it's got a slight curve to it if you took all the skin off slight curve to it is called the uh, the radius okay and it, again it is a long bone and it travels all the way down to uh, the carpus which is uh, what we call it the horse's knee okay and this this structure here is the carpus so we've got the ulna and we've got the radius and then we've got this here which is the carpus uh, this is horse's knee it's made up of uh, seven bones uh, sometimes eight okay if we bring the camera around to the front okay it's basically made up of two rows of bones okay we have the proximal row and what we call the distal row or the top row and the bottom row on the top row there are three bones there's one here one in the middle and one to the outside the one on the inside is the radiocarpal bone the one in the middle is the intermediate carpal bone and the one on the outside is the ulnocarpal bone okay that's the proximal row or the top row bottom row the distal row are just numbered we've got the second the third and the fourth the first is round the back and often fused to the second sometimes it isn't there at all and then if we come back round to the side the final bone in the knee is a bone here in this area here and it's angled slightly inwards and it's called the accessory carpal bone the two flexor tendons run down the back of the leg and as they go over the back of the knee it's really important that these two tendons stay central over 
the back of the knee. This bone that's angled in just helps to keep the two tendons central as they run through the carpal canal through the back uh, of the knee. So now we're into uh, the lower limb. Okay, and the lower limb is we have a long bone here called the third metacarpal bone. Again, really big, heavy, weight-bearing bone. And then we have two splint bones that run down the back. The one on the inside that you can't see is the second, and the one on the outside is the fourth. The second is slightly longer than the fourth uh, uh, carpal bone, uh, metacarpal bone. So we have the third, second, and fourth. Or it's our second on the inside. Third is the big one, and fourth is the other splint bone. Down here, then we get to this joint here, which is the fetlock joint, probably the hardest working joint in the, the horse's body. It goes up, it's under a tremendous amount of load and it has a huge range of movement. At the back of the fetlock, there are two small sesamoid bones. A sesamoid bone is a bone embedded within a tendon. Okay, and there are two of them here, and they're known as the proximal sesamoid bones, one on the inside and one on the outside, or one medial and one lateral. Then we get to the first of the pastern bones, okay, and it's called uh, the proximal phalanx. The proximal phalanx is it's quite a short bone, uh, it is a long bone, and it's situated roughly here. Okay, this is a proximal phalanx. Then you have the middle phalanx, or the second phalanx, okay, and that is half in and half out of the hoof. And then finally, well not finally, but of the pasterns anyway, uh, or the phalanges, we have the distal phalanx, or P3, or coffin bone. Uh, all these terms commonly get used, but its correct anatomical term is the distal phalanx, and that is encased inside uh, the hoof capsule. And finally, at the back, deep inside there, we have the uh, navicular bone, or its correct anatomical term is the distal sesamoid. As I touched on before, there are two tendons that run down the back. Okay, we have the deep and the superficial. They carry on running down. The superficial and the deep run over the fetlock. Just below the fetlock, the superficial inserts at the bottom of the, the proximal phalanx and the top of the middle phalanx on either side, a little bit like that. The deep runs through both of those, it travels all the way down into the foot and inserts onto the semilunar line on the bone inside the hoof, which is the distal phalanx. So they're the two flexor tendons. There are two extensor tendons that run down the front. Obviously they extend the limb. It is the lateral digital extensor tendon and the common digital uh, extensor tendon. They run down, they, they, they originate again high up here, okay, they run down, they run over the front of the knee, uh, they run down the front, slightly to the outside, okay, they, they run slightly laterally, and just before they get to the fetlock, the common this is, it centralises itself, goes over a bursa at the fetlock, and it continues down, and there are attachments to the proximal phalanx, the middle phalanx, and the extensor process of the distal phalanx inside the hoof. The, the lateral digital extensor tendon runs down the lateral side and attaches to the proximal aspect of the proximal phalanx here. So the lateral digital extensor tendon ends there. The common digital extensor tendon travels all the way down to the bone inside the hoof. And again, the job of them is to extend the leg. This joint I alluded to before that there's a, it goes through a tremendous amount of stress. Uh, it has a massive range of movement. And as a result, there's a lot of uh, anatomical tissues in this uh, this area. There are three sets of collateral ligaments on either side. Okay, the point of collateral ligaments is to keep the joint moving on its intended plane, which is forwards and backwards, and to stop the joint moving side to side. It does allow a small amount of side to side movement, uh, but there are three sets of collateral ligaments uh, in this area that do the job. One of them goes that way, one of them goes that way, and one of them is a band that goes down either side. I won't uh, I won't mention the names here because uh, I don't want to blind you with too many uh, long words but there are basically six, six sets of collateral ligaments and then if we come round to the back we mentioned before we've got the proximal sesamoid bones here there are five sets of ligaments the inter, the short, the, the cruciate, the oblique and the long all in this area here which run down the back which help to stabilise uh, these, these uh, two, two bones I, like I said to you before, there are two tendons that run down through the gap in the middle of them and they have a tendency to force the sesamoid bones out so that you need something else that's going to hold them in. Okay, and uh, 
the thing that does that job is the suspensory ligament. Hopefully you've all heard of the suspensory ligament. It's a pretty uh, massive ligament in the horse's lower leg. Okay, and it originates up here at the back of the knee. Okay, the distal row of carpal, the bottom row of carpal bones, and the top of the third metacarpal bone. It basically runs down around this area here. It divides into two, and two branches run that way. Okay, and they run from the back round to the front where it joins the common digital extensor tendon and then inserts on the extensor process. As it bifurcates or splits in half here, it goes over what we call the abaxial surface of the proximal sesamoids and again they help to hold it in. So we've got two structures pushing it out, two the suspensory ligament are holding it back in and then there are five sets of sesamoidian ligaments in this area which help to stabilize it. I only say this just to really highlight to you just how much stress this particular joint in the lower leg uh, is under so so yeah that's the uh, that they're the main structures by all means not the only structures in the in the thoracic limb there are a lot more to each individual bone they all do uh, different things and there's a lot of structures that, that I haven't included in this uh, little little short video so again from a surface anatomy point of view I hope that helped to show you where some of the bones are uh, in the forelimb so the next video is going to be same again, only this time we're going to go through the bones of the hind limb. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like. If you have any comments, please leave them below uh, and I'll try and answer them for you. Okay, thank you.